that you have to be seated to win. That's what he told me. So, <coughs> All right, welcome. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to, to join us today. This is uh, a great turnout for Penta's 2019 annual safety kickoff, uh, our Arizona version. We're taking this road show on the sh on the road now at four four places this year, so this is great. We really appreciate um, you guys coming out and supporting us throughout the year and getting ready for a uh, a great 2019. Um, I'd like to do a couple of introductions. Um, just some of our VIPs. I'm sorry. My name is Glenn Maxwell. I am the VP of Pre-Construction for Penta. Uh, so. Hopefully you won't have to listen to me for too long, other, other than I'm going to give out some prizes, so that'll be good. Um, some of our VIPs, I don't know how many, if we have any of the dignitaries or tribal members from the Tohono O'odham Nation, um, certainly like you guys to be recognized, stand, um, and we appreciate your support. Uh, also, all of our partners and the team at uh, the West Valley Project, so we'd like to uh, recognize you and thank you for your for your great effort out there so um if you want to stand we, we'd appreciate making fun of you for just a second or two but you have to be seated to win so we're going to raffle right now sorry you can't win thank you <laughs> um and for those of you hopefully everybody's made it around to our vendors this is kind of a new format right rod um make it a little more interactive so we've got uh I got a huge list of vendors here. I, I'll, I'll try and run through real quick. Or Safety, Sun State, Liberty Mutual, Safety Reports, Bel Air, Delta, A Rock, Rycor, Waxy, Onsite, Health and Safety, Concentra, Border Supply, HD Supply, and of course Penta Precon. That's my table. So uh, thank you very much for supporting us and for coming out and uh, you know showing your your products and what you guys do to support safety. It's uh, it's great to have people kind of interact and put some faces to names. Uh, finally, maybe just do a quick introduction to the Penta, uh, our executive management team. As we said, this is a, our annual safety kickoff, and really this is our biggest and most important, uh, honestly, um, event that we do. Uh, so between myself and my partners, Joel. Wallace, Mark Briggs, John Canito, uh, and certainly Rod Weber, our entire executive management team is here today to support and, and certainly talk to you a little bit about uh, the importance of safety and how, to, and how we're going to kick off 2019. So thank you guys for uh, making it out. All right, so let's do a couple of quick raffles uh, as Rod's given me here. And I will try and make sure I give props to the people. We have a $50 gift card for on-site health and safety. Maybe have somebody uh, pull the ticket or somebody nearby so I don't get accused of. And the gift card is for, I'm sorry, it's $50 to Starbucks. All right. Everybody got your tickets ready? This is kind of warming up so as when the when Joel and John and Rod get up here for the big prizes, you're already warmed up. Last three numbers, 158. 158. Is that you, Mr. Holmberg? <laughs> All right, great. Dan and Mark. All right, come on up. All right. Get her some Starbucks. Get her some caffeine. We have another $50 gift card. This is a MasterCard $50 gift card donated by A Rock. Thank you. Last four numbers, three, four, one. I assume I don't need to read the, they're four. Three, four, one. Fifty dollars. Going once, goes to the uh, raffler if nobody picks it up, I think. Is that part of the deal? Really? Somebody already lost their tickets. All right, we'll pull another one. Yellow one, yellow ticket. Oh no, nope, not a yellow ticket. White ticket. Oh, we'll save that for the next one. Check his ticket. 
I already put that on my iTunes account, so there's only $20 left. Okay, we've got a uh, Amazon Fire tablet donated by Waxy. And uh, fortunately, we've already picked a ticket. So uh, white ticket, last three numbers, one, two, two. One, two, two. Really? Maybe we should pick another ticket. That's usually when people find their first one. <laughs> yellow ticket. Right. Those are limited edition yellow ticket. Last three numbers, zero, three, one. Oh, who's handing out the yellow? There we go. Awesome. Okay. We have a, a gift bag of potpourri and candles. Actually, no. I think it's an Echo Dot and some other good things in there. Donated by Cassentra. This looks like some swag. If you wanted the potpourri, I'm sure we can get that, but the yellow ticket. Last number is 085. I think this is like the Alexa thing, right? The Echo Dot, or is this the... Come on, who doesn't want Alexa in their house? Or Echo... 085. Yellow ticket. Nobody? <coughs> All right. We're going to have to modify this when we get 600 people in the room. All right. Last white ticket, last numbers, 019, 400, 019. There we go. All right. All right, I have two more, two more gifts. I'm going to go with the, excuse me, nice pair of work boots, Timberland Pro work boots. Um, the donated by Glove Protection, powered by OR. Did I say that right? Um, I, from what Rob told me is uh, these are the display models, unless they just happen to fit you. <laughs> Take them over to the booth, and they will get you fitted. Probably get you some other swag as well. We all ready? <laughs> 400 088, white ticket. 400 088. Nice. Congratulations. We only give him one so he can't <laughs> give him one shoe, one boot. <laughs> and I was going to have Joel come up and model the, the last gift. Joel, you want to model this for me? <laughs> so we got a full, nice bag set here donated by 3M. This is a nice set. We're going to uh, pull the lucky winner. Hopefully, maybe the boot guy wins those, too. He'll be all set. <laughs> all right, 400, 129. 129. For, for dramatics, they're waiting. All right. Must have given away a lot of tickets. We get the 3M table doesn't win this. That would be kind of a bummer. <laughs> okay, five nine eight zero seven seven. There you go. Thank you. And they told me I'm not allowed to raffle any more stuff off, so I will leave some of that for some other people. So with that, I'm going to turn it over. Oh, what do we got? You can share it with that guy, I think. You can go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And he'll go Tuesday, Thursday. We'll find you something. We'll find you something. Rod? Huh? Oh, well, did you not check the ticket? You got a yellow ticket? No, this one's white. No, no, no. 598-077. Oh. 
All right, everybody got to recheck there. I'm going to check all the tickets. That was good. He almost pulled that off, too. <laughs> he almost pulled that off. All right. Um, with that, I'm going to turn over to our president, Mr. John Canito. That's you. And uh, we'll let him uh, get on with the main presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. I was actually doing something important. I was talking to Rod. Please come see Rod afterwards. We'll make sure you get something good. <laughs> we don't want anybody to go away from here unhappy. So, um, Hey, thank you all very much for coming. My name is John Canito. I'm the president of Penta. Um, we do this in Arizona, Nevada, and then we do two in Southern California. And the intention of it is really just to kick off the year with a, a really positive attitude towards how we're going to improve safety. And, and actually, believe it or not, in Nevada too, but in Nevada and Arizona, we always like to say thank you to, to our partners with Hunt because we do so much work with them as, a, as everybody, a lot of you are probably working on the TO project. and. Uh, Thank you. I see Dan over there and Mark, so and a lot of the other guys sprinkled around. So thank you guys for supporting us as well. So the purpose of this is to really set the tone for the year. Um, actually, I've got a few notes here. It won't take too long. Uh, Rod makes it easy for me. He uh, makes some alliterations. So I have four P's this year: positive, purpose, process, and partners. So I'm going to start with. Uh, we already talked about partners and thanking everybody for being here, but. Uh, we changed this. We've been doing this for probably 12 years now. And we changed it because at first we got up here and we used to talk about Penta all the time. And we realized that that was really stupid, that we were um, up here talking about a very small portion of the project and that the majority of the impact on safety on any project comes from, frankly, all of you, the people that are working on the projects, and also all of our subcontractor partners. So we changed our focus, and that's when we started introducing some of these booths so that everybody else could participate, and so that we could really just, in, in part, celebrate the success of the past year and all the things that we collectively, so when you hear me say we, it is not about Penta, it is about the collective we of subcontractors, Hunt, all of the uh, clients that we work with and our partners on the team. So the success that we've had over the past year and then really set the tone for how we're going to go forward into the, uh, into the future. So looking back on our past year, for Penta at least, it, it, and all the subcontractors that we work with, we had a combined total of a million six man hours on the jobs. And uh, that's actually a pretty high number for us. Um, I would think that's a pretty high number for a lot of people, so that's a good thing. And it, with that, we had um, an IR of 0.89, and we had zero lost time injuries and only three minor recordable injuries. So when we look back at 2018, I almost said 17, I'm not quite used to 19 yet. Um, when we look back at 2018, we're really proud of that record, and we just want to do even better. Our goal is to do zero on everything across the board, zero recordables, zero lost times, period. But um, while we don't always hit that goal, we can be really proud of it when it's generally minor, minor injuries. So when I talk about the purpose of this and setting the tone for going forward, it's really that, we, I, and ever, a lot of people say this, you know, you go to a lot of safety things and you hear safety's number one, you hear a lot of safety things about how our focus is completely on safety, it's the most important thing on the job. And that's a great thing. I'm not actually saying that in a negative way. We, when we talk about safety, we don't look at it as a competitive thing. We want to support every contractor out there, whether they're our competitors or not, because safety's really about the people that are working on the jobs and the people that we interface with. One of the things that we talk about a lot is, you know, uh, a worker comes to work understanding that they're going to be in harm's way, that, that it's a fairly hazardous job. Everything that we do out there does uh, create risk, and it is hazardous. So you're, you're more heightened and aware of your surroundings, and, and, and with the focus that the teams put on safety, I think everybody's watching out for each other. That's an important piece that we like to emphasize. But the other thing we like to emphasize is the impact that we have on, on the people that we work around. Because we, we call it building our bubble around the job site. Nobody comes, especially because we do a lot of work in casinos, but we're building a casino here, um, you know, right next to an adjacent casino. We're, we're in interfacing with the public on a regular basis. Those people don't come to work 
expect or they don't come to a casino or a hotel or a university if it's another type of project like that or an airport where a lot of people have been working recently. They don't come there expecting to be in danger. They come there expecting to do their regular thing. So we look at that as another major obligation that we, um, the collective we have, which is protect all the people that interface with our projects. And the way we do that is our processes, honestly. Um, it, the processes are the tools that we use. The processes are the, the things we put in place to try and implement safety. But what really, the only way those work is if they're backed up by Probably something that feels a little bit awkward to say in a, in a group full of, uh, you know, tough construction people, but it's really about caring. We always boil that down. Back when we started this 12 years ago, the whole campaign started about caring about people, and we've always tried to focus every message in some way to caring about people, whether it's caring about yourself, caring about your family, and caring that you keep yourself safe so that you can go home and not be uh, an impact on your family, or caring about the people you're working with and having the courage to stand up and say something if something's, somebody's doing something wrong so that nobody gets hurt. Because at the end of the day, the end goal, and I can honestly speak for Hunt and for Penta in this particular case, is that every single person who comes in contact with one of our projects goes home in exactly the same condition or better, maybe even a little healthier, um, than they came to work that morning or than they came to visit the project area. So with that being said, the last thing I'm going to mention is, again, just a very quick thank, thank you to all of our partners who've spent the time to put up booths. Um, please take a minute to walk around and talk to each of them. They all have something really great that they contribute to the mission that we're trying to accomplish here. And in that vein, uh, what we've decided to do for a format this year is ask our uh, Senior Vice President of Operations, Joel Wallace, is going to interview three significant um, players from subcontractors that work on our projects and talk to them about what safety means to them. So thank you for your time. We'll try to keep things moving, um, but we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, yeah, like John said, uh, the majority of the hours on a project are not just done by us, even as a self-reformed GC, but by our trade partners. So we, we really do want to hear what they contribute and how they are uh, changing the way we do safety. So uh, the first person I'd like to interview, or, or victim, whatever you want to call it, um, if I can get Bel Air Safety Director, Scott uh, Canast up. Give him a round of applause. Are we sharing a mic, Rod? Okay. Yeah, don't hurt yourself coming up. No. Oh, there it is back there. Scott, how you doing today? Doing good. So you're the safety director, so these are going to be easy or an easy question for you. I'm a victim. Oh well, no. So first question, right? So you only got one question, but. Um, since you're the safety director, this should be an easy one for you. Uh, with OSHA's recent renewal of their 29 CFR 1926 Subpart A National Emphasis Program on Trenching and Excavation, what impact do you predict the requirements for mandatory adoption of record-keeping manuals as published <laughs> in CPL 0200131 will have on the various state plans? Well, so what... <laughs> what <laughs> what I've done is I've I've asked my 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 sub victim Eric to uh, come answer up with that an one. Answer for that. <laughs> no, I'm ju I'm just kidding. That's that's not the intent of this. If you knew that, that'd be pretty impressive. I have an answer because we're already working on it. Uh, let's hear it. There's also fall, there's also new uh, a new uh, lift standard that's out for uh, for lifts also. Oh. But uh, it basically comes down to they are the, the standard comes down to you need to have training. You need to have. Uh, a lot of documentation to back that up that it, you can prove that actually took place, where it took place, and who those people are so you can uh, direct people and the locations in which you're going to be doing your trench and excavation. So wow, we have that's impressive. Place. Round of applause there. That was a joke question. <laughs> hey, Rod, the next time I do this, don't have the safety director be the first one I <laughs> ask questions about here. So, no, here's the, here's the, 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 the main question. Um, can you give us some insight into a few of your most recent safety initiatives 
that you believe reaches all levels of the field, including your apprentices, and what benefits have you seen from that or you hope to see in the future? Well, okay, so, so our basic concept, uh, we drive it home with every person that comes to, uh, to Bel Air, and it, we don't really come through new directives and go through new items. We try to reinforce what happens day in and day out, and, and the reality of that is, is every one of our employees comes through um, top to bottom, and we discuss with them the reality of what safety is. And if anybody in this room can define what safety is, um, it's a big, big word. And uh, that is a very hard thing to really put your finger on. Safety could be uh, many things, but the reality of it is it, it happens, you know, in, in between your ears, basically. And so we take all of our employees, bring them in, we discuss the uh, Heinrich Triangle, which is basically um, understanding the concept of how many hazards you have on a job site, how you control those things through use of hazard identification tools, and then understanding the concept of the difference between a near miss, an accident, and a really bad thing that happens, which could be a fatality or burning down a building or equipment damage, stuff, stuff that could impact your job. We take that information and teach that to every single employee that comes through the door. So um, they understand what the concept it is to be a safety personnel. And then we give them the tools to do that. And those tools are in the form of procedures that everybody should have and not sitting on the shelf and collecting dust, but we give those tools to them and then we go out and make sure that those tools are interjected and followed up with each of our foremen and our superintendents and our employees and then uh, kind of measure those things, make sure that they're getting done. Um, along the timeline of a job, we can identify what parts and pieces are supposed to be done and making sure that we have pre-task done, plans done, inspections, but realistically those are tools that add to us finding all of our hazards, trying to control those things as much as possible because here's the reality. Reality is, is we can train every single person in this room, hundreds of thousands of hours of that, right? And we could walk outside, trip over our shoelace and have an injury. So we're trying to reduce the amount of shoelaces that we have to trip over, and that comes in many different forms in many different locations. But the people that do that, again, going back to what you said, everybody's important. But if you don't understand what you're doing, if I handed somebody um, a pre-task plan, for example, to identify hazards and they've never been trained on what that actually means or how to do a pre-task plan, um, they're basically going to do what? Copy from this person and learn from this person. That guy's been doing it wrong forever. They don't understand what's happening, so we're verifying through the process of learning and through the process of verification in the field how that happens and, and making sure that they understand what's happening, and then we track that and make sure that those items are accomplished. So um, in many different formats, what I focus on is peeling back the banana and making sure that we don't have like a bunch too. of fluff, right? So yeah. um, that's our process. That's what we do, and, and we follow through with that over and over and over again. Um, are we perfect? Um, kind of. <laughs> we've done a really good job. Uh, we've had, out of five years, we've, uh, the, you know, the past five years, we've only had one year there that we had uh, an OSHA recordable. Um, last year we had zero. We had no lost time injuries last year. Not to say we didn't have some first aids and some issues that we need to deal with, but... Um, done a pretty good job. So uh, for an example, on a daily basis, just kind of give you an idea. Um, we're not the largest company by, by any means, but we have anywhere from 60 to 80 pre-task plans every single do day done here just in the state of Arizona, right? So, which doesn't seem like a, a ton when you're talking about nationwide companies, but a, that's a lot of hazards that we're catching and delivering. And then with inspections and a few other things, you know, as best we possibly can and everybody should have those things and they can say that they do them but I can tell you that we verify that our guys are actually using that and understand what they're doing how they're doing it and focus on that aspect of it not here's your form get it done make sure you're checking the box and we're moving on so uh, yeah you Scott you're I mean you're spot on just on the quality of the pre-task plans and everything uh, it's not it's not a check the box type thing so um, no I appreciate it Connor? yeah no thank you uh, thank great you. answer and thanks I can't believe you got my joke question. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Um, okay, next up, uh, we got 
A-Rock, uh, Nate Fernstall. Oh, he's right here. <laughs> Welcome, Nate. Okay. Thank you. No joke question for you. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm nervous. That joke question, remember old school, or what was it old school? Uh, the, the, the debate, and that's where that question reminds me of. But uh, anyway, here you go, Nate. Um, has the concept of lean construction and or prefabrication been implemented or discussed within your firm? How does this type of planning directly affect safety? We, uh, we have, um, I would like to say, um, you know, like Bel Air and probably all of you guys, we try and stay out in front of everything. We try and plan as much as possible and be innovative, be cutting edge, you know, think of the best and most effective way to do things. Um, you know, the obvious reasons, one, it, you know, it helps the client, and two, it, it's beneficial for us. Um, as far as lean construction, not so much, but prefabrication, we did do a particular job. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay, sounds weird to me. Um, we did a prefabrication a couple years ago where we were asked to uh, come up with a way to expedite a hospital where we, um, you know, the, the owner, A-Rock, and um, the team on that project, they, they came up with this great idea to prefab all the bathrooms. So we, we got with all the subs. Um, we were kind of the forefront because we had to build the bathroom first. And then we had to coordinate that with all the MEP trades have the city inspector do their inspection, then we insulate, we hang it, we tape it, do all that, it gets painted, it's 100% ready, rolls off the assembly line, put on a truck, and then driven to the job site and flown into the building to its respected area. So basically it just rolled down the hallway, got plugged in, everything got hooked up, and boom, it was done. Um, and we had a great success with that. I mean, it. Uh, the client was very happy. We got it done really quick with a small amount of people. So it uh, it does pay off. And again, uh, I highly recommend you know if you have the opportunity to work with a good team and you know which we all do. But uh, you know just get the creative juices flowing and and really uh, be forefront in your thoughts. You can be successful. Um, I would say as far as safety wise, there's a lot of pros to that. Um, they outweigh the cons for sure. Um, you know, your activity is well planned out, right? So if, right from the get-go, you, you have everything lined out so you know exactly what you're doing, how you're going to do it. So that, that right there helps minimize or, or at least abate a lot of the hazards that happen just in day-to-day -day operations where people are kind of shooting from the hip and, and doing things with a little less guidance. Um, you know, you're performing with minimal crew sizes, so that's less oversight. You have less people that you're looking after, you're having to maintain and manage. Um, Again, it's a controlled environment, so um, you can minimize the distractors. You know, you don't have 20 people working in a small little area, and you know you're trying to work around each other and climb all over materials or get 20 lifts in a little spot. So that works out great. Um, ergonomically, it's beneficial. You know, for us, we set up cut tables, so we're we're you know helping people that way. Um, housekeeping, you can manage the trash really easily. So so the pros are really great. Uh, as far as the cons, the only thing I can really say is, you know, I'm sure you, everybody would agree, but um, something like that where, you, you know, I'm just going to make up a number, but you know you have to cut 4,000 of a, in our case, a stud at, you know, 16 and a half feet long. Um, you're probably going to have one or two people doing that. So I there is that complacency factor, and that's probably the most dangerous portion because, you know, you're just cutting along, and you know you get to work, you have to cut five million of these today and you just get going and you start losing traction and not paying attention. So that's probably the biggest hazard that we recognized and, and had to really maintain. And then um, another thing I guess that isn't probably such a big deal, but like repetitive motion, you know, if you don't have your area set up right and you're not paying attention to that, you can, you know, get strains and, and, and twists and injuries that way. So, you know, it's just, I, I hate to use the cliche, working smarter, not harder, but really that's what it comes down to. Yeah, no, appreciate that. And I, and I think Scott said it too, is on the shoelaces and what you're saying on the prefabrication and, and the way Rod, Rod states it is uh, engineering out the hazard. I mean, that's the best way to reduce uh, any risk is by just engineering out that hazard like uh, 
reducing man hours or getting rid of shoelaces. So uh, great points. I appreciate it, Nate. Hey, thank you. thank you. Thanks for having us. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, RICOR, Jim Thompson. Round of applause for Jim. How you doing, Jim? Okay. Okay, uh, question for you. Uh, working in excavations along active roadways is certainly a different hazard than what our building contractors will face, but what are some of the safety practices you have implemented that could also be used on the site during the building phase? Well, um, off-site work is not that much different than on-site work. The only, the only thing with the off-site work, we introduce the general public, like out there on 91st Avenue. That's the biggest hazard we have out there, is texting and driving. <laughs> Someone comes rolling through your barricades and your guys are hit. On site, <clears throat> our biggest hazard is, is trying to secure your work zone, our work zone with the big Tonka toys, and not impact other guys around you, because it's not just our site. It is for about two weeks <laughs> when we start and then Derek and Suntech rolls in and chases us around the place. So um, basically proper barricading of your work area, communicating with the trades that are around you is very important first thing in the morning. Um, support from Hunt Penta in the field, the superintendents, have a, a good plan ahead, um, procedure of how we're going to go from here to here to here, what the expectations are for for our stuff, because we have the biggest toys out there, and we have the most that can do the most damage if we if we hit somebody. So one of our biggest hazards we have is struck buys. Not only my own people, but other people who are in the work zone. So we implement quite a few spotters if we're in tight, like when we come to, uh, to excavate the dock here next week. There's a lot of people in there. There'll be a lot of red flagging up. Red flag means you can't cross it, but then we'll have an extra spot or two out there too. Just that's their only job is to look for bodies, someone coming into our work zone. So basically, the hardest thing is securing your work zone, make sure it's properly barricaded, and then communicate to the goals around you. That's but great, Jim. No, great points. I appreciate it. I mean, you right. do deal with a set of different hazards than we do, and uh, um, and it is hazardous work, and especially with the public and. Watching out for all the crazy drivers too, I assume. But no, I appreciate it, Jim. Cool, thanks. Um, okay, <laughs> round of applause for actually round of applause for all the interviewees. Um, real quick before we go into the next section, quick raffle. We're gonna go with one of the big ones right now. Uh, this Yeti cooler. Does anyone know what the 110 stands for? Huh? It's a 110 Yeti, yellow ticket, 948-117. Oh, we got a winner. Check the ticket. Congratulations. Uh-huh. Huh? Oh, you can get it afterwards. I promise we'll be here. So uh, along with wanting to hear from our partners and, and uh, what they're doing in the, the construction um, phase of projects and to be more safe, um, we also want to acknowledge them and, and uh, award them uh, or reward them um, for those uh, those safe practices. So we got some awards here. Uh, we're going to have three of them, and I think we'll start the slides. Um, but uh, they're going to be Safety Innovator of the Year, Safety Leader of the Year, and Safest Sub of the Year. So we're going to get started. So the first one is the Safety Innovator uh, of the war of the Year. So, and this is this is the Penta and also Hunt got together and went through this, and 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 this is from. Uh, several individuals getting together and kicking around names, and so it's uh, it, it means a lot coming from that group. So 
Uh, we've got Jerry Barnier, SunTech, Nate A-Rock, and Chris Spencer from Progressive Roofing. So I don't know if, I, I know Nate's here, but uh, if anyone else is here, just stand up if you're a nominee. And the winner for Safety Innovator is Nate. Now, the, the team talked about that Nate innovated a, an overhead fall protection, which uh, worked really well and from pro productivity, but also just from a safety standpoint. So just like to acknowledge Nate and say uh, congratulations on that award. You got the certificate up there? Oh, there we go. Yeah, and here's the certificate and the gift card. I appreciate it, Nate. Thank you so much, man. Okay, next up is Sadie, safety leader, uh, an individual that stands out um, and has been doing a fantastic job and with regards to safety. Nominees are Victor with Bel Air, Jacob with SunTech, Jason with Shuff, and Travis with Sturgeon. So round of applause, and if they're here, stand up and acknowledge them. Okay, and the winner is Victor with Bel Air. Congratulations. No, really appreciate the effort on safety. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up is the subcontractor of the year with regards to safety. So our nominees are, okay, Bel Air, Shuff, SunTech, Delta, and A-Rock. And a round of applause for all these companies. They, uh, they all really, really do, I mean, uh, breathe and live safety every single day, and, and, and their records show for it with their recordables and lost time, so um, great job by all of them. But there can only be one winner, uh, and the winner is SunTech. <laughs> now, con uh, congratulations, SunTech. I mean, it's been well over 80,000 hours without incident, um, and it is high hazard work, and, and with regards to safety, I mean, there's always a couple bumps in the road, but they've always tried to correct uh, any issues out there. And with the amount of man hours, um, it's been, been impressive to see uh, their safety record. So we really appreciate it and thank you, Derek. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, fantastic job by uh, SunTech. They've uh, uh, done a great job and uh, appreciate all their efforts. But next up, we are gonna get to the main highlight of our presentation. He uh, is a great speaker and our safety director. He looks like the guy from Mr. Incredible, but uh, <laughs> I'll introduce Rod Weber. Thank you. Thank, and congratulations again to all of our award winners. Give them a big hand because they deserve it. And one thing too on the awards, um, we do have uh, some plaques being made. So our, our safety innovator, safety leader, and subcontractor of the year, you all, you all have big, uh, nice plaques being made that, that we'll, we will get to you, okay? So I want to make sure you guys knew. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, start off with another raffle here. Let's see. So we gave away the Yeti. I think I'll save the TV for last. And I know uh, Sun State has a cooler in the back we're going to be raffling off, too. So we might be able to do a couple of them. Um, but let's have somebody draw a name. Joel, make sure you dig deep and get a good one. So this is for a $500 gift card for Dick's Sporting Goods. I don't know if everyone here is a golfer, but Penta does a great golf tournament every year. So if you want to get a new set of golf clubs, <laughs> and then you, could, you can come golf at our charity event. That'd be awesome. So here's the, uh, the winning ticket for $500 gift card to Dick's Sporting Goods. Ready? Drum roll, please. Okay, 400. Are we on track so far? 164. One, six, four. Anna, all right. Congratulations. And Anna's with um, Safety Pros, and 
And we actually stole one of their employees. Nick DeMember is now our, our employee, but we got them for, so there's your payoff for Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, congratulations. And then I know, uh, I know Brian, is Brian, where's Brian Hurry? Is he in the room still or is he, did he, he, he went to go get some snacks. Yeah, so uh, Brett, I know we have another. We're going to just take a quick second and raffle. We're ahead of schedule anyway, and everyone likes raffle prizes, right? So we're going to do one more raffle, and this is going to be for their big Yeti cooler. Uh, I think there's his Cabela's, so, and it's in the back. So did you pull a name out? Bill Luker Western Millwork. Bill, Western Millwork. <laughs> Bill. Oh, hey, all right, Bill. Nice. Look, at you won something after all, Bill. That's awesome. Check his name again, Brett. Oh, it's ID. All right. Yeah. And when you go fishing, make sure you fill that with some good fish, and then we'll, we'll take it at the job. All right. That's great. Well, hey, we really appreciate you guys coming, and hopefully you guys all win some prizes. And hopefully you guys all liked our swag items this year, right? So we had the, uh, that was our safety committee that picked that out. So Penta has an executive safety committee, and every year we like to talk about what we're going to do for these events. And, uh, and then, we, then we coerce uh, Mark and John to, to put the money up for all this. So big round of applause for our executives that pay for all this. And Glenn just keeps finding us more work so we can keep paying for it. Uh, good job. We got a great racket here. This is awesome. Except for I don't win any prizes. I don't know what that's all about. So race day is here, you guys. This is our race car theme this year. Every year we like to do a different theme. And so we, we've kind of just kiddingly tried to come up with different rhymes every year. And so I'm sure, you know, in 2011 it was Safety 24-7 in 2011. And then it was Safe and Clean in 2013. And so, you know, we have all kinds of rhymes. This year it's Revving the Machine in 2019, right? So what does that mean? That means that it's time. Race day is here, man. The race is on, and we're all part of it, right? We're all on the race team right now. So what does that mean for us? Well, a couple things. One is that it's time to ignite your engines. It's time to get fired up for safety right now because this is really an important time in our industry because how many of you guys remember what was happening a few years ago? Zero. Nothing was happening, right? Everybody was scrambling trying to find work. So what happened was a lot of those race cars that were on the tracks getting driven every day and every weekend, and they were winning trophies and winning awards. Guess where those race cars ended up? In the garage. And a lot of companies just hung it up. They parked their race cars, and they just hung it up. And I know you guys probably know of a lot of companies that just didn't make it through that recession. And it was a rough one, you know. There was, there was some times... When, you know, we were struggling, we went from doing 10 billion a year down to a billion. It was tough. I'm just kidding. We were, <laughs> we were under a billion, we were under a billion, so. But no, it was, it was rough for everybody and, uh, and, and for us included. But listen, um, we, we, we've got the race car out of the garage now. And, and you know what we did during that recession? We didn't hang up the keys. We were in there doing an overhaul and getting ready for that sucker to be revved up and ready to go. And I know a lot of you guys did the same thing. It was a time to really bring the car in and start doing a complete overhaul and start changing out some of the parts. Because you know what, some of the parts on there might not have been the best, they might have been worn out. So it was a good time to kind of rev that machine and, and now we're ready to go. We've got that car out on the track, we're revving the engine and we are lighting up those tires. Because what does lighting up the tires do? Helps you to stick on that track, right? So you're not sliding all over the place. And we're doing that. So this is the time right now. And so this year, we want to really just try and get everybody on board with this race car theme because this is what it is. We're in the race together, you guys. And, and I think, like, like John said, we changed the format of this. Our first few years, we brought keynote speakers in, and we did some great talks with our folks. And we tried to, you know, encourage our people to embrace safety and to, and to think about it first and foremost, and it was good. But you know, there's a, there's a famous verse that says, don't despise small beginnings. And that was kind of a small beginning. And now you can see we've got four of these events going this year, and we'll literally reach hundreds and hundreds of people with this event. And we have changed it. The focus now is on our partners because we really need 
for you guys to ignite your engines. We need for you guys to get on fire for safety and start lighting those tires up because that's what's going to propel and launch us into a safe future, right? And it's all of our partners that are here. So I'm so glad we had these exhibitors come today and really appreciate you guys, your participation because you guys are our partners that help us to achieve that great safety success. So it's here. I mean, it's race day is here and it's time to really ignite the tires. The other thing it's time to do is increase, right? We know we've come out of a very slow recession. And so a lot of people, you know, they had that, that car in the garage and maybe they weren't doing as many overhauls on it as they should. But now it's time to really hit the pedal to the metal and we are gonna start increasing because we're coming out of a slow period. We're coming out of a slow turn, but what happens after that slow turn? That fast straightaway, right? And that's what we're on right now. We're on a fast straightaway. And this is a time, and we have so much backlog. I know John talked about some of the positives with Penta. Um, and I know you guys are all along for the ride. It's race day with everybody here. And so we have a huge backlog. We have close to, I think, a billion dollars in backlog here over the next few years, over that. So uh, maybe 10 billion, I don't know. We're gonna be 100 billion, I don't know, what the heck? Well, le less than 100. More than one, less than 100? All right. So anyways, we have a lot, of, a lot of backlog, and you guys are all going to be on the ride. So listen, it's, it's time for us to increase. It's time for us to put the pedal to the metal and for us to really just start hitting that straightaway now and getting our speed. But we want to do it safely, and we need all you guys to be embracing that with us. So we're glad, again, that you guys are here for this. The other point that I want to make is that we, it's time to invest, right? Because think about it. When you're out there racing, your car is taking a beating right? Your tires wear out quickly and you break oil lines and, and your steering goes out or heaven forbid you get in a little collision and you have a little bump along the road, right? Do any of us have bumps along the road? Yeah, we all do, right? We've had a few and listen, we learn from them, but we also want to invest. We want to make sure that we have enough of the right people and I know that's hard right now because the market is so, so tight right now with work. It's hard to find good people, but listen, they're out there. You might have to steal them from another company like we did, but you, but you can find them, right? <laughs> I'm not recommending them, I'm just teasing Anna, but next person will be great. So. so anyways, there are some good people out there. You just have to look and listen, we have to find some really good people. And I, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy. We are so blessed on our, in our company and the people that we work with like you guys. We have some super talented and very, very qualified and capable people that are completely invested in safety, and it's amazing. And so, and a lot of those people are here today just helping. I know we have all the girls in the back that help with the sign-in. I mean, everything from every position in our company and all the subs that we have are just fantastic, and we have great people. So we're not going to steal your people, but we are looking. So anyways, I will say it's time to get good people on board. It's also time to invest in some good equipment, right? And we've got a lot of good suppliers here. I know Ors here and Borders and HD and Concentra and, and Waxy. We have some great products here. It's time to get good equipment, good products, good materials so that we can have a good quality project and we can be successful. And so, listen, it's time to invest in product. It's time to invest in good equipment. It's time like that harness that 3M gave. Thank you, Cordy. That was an excellent harness. So that's top of the line, right? Jacob's going to wear that proudly, I'm sure, with his new boots. But I'm a size 14, if you, just if you want to donate. So I noticed some of our, some of our executives could probably use some boots because they all came in with their shiny shoes today with mud on them, <laughs> which is <laughs> awesome. I was glad to see that. It means they're getting out walking the job. But you can see those guys in the back, and they'll get you some boots, Glenn. Just saying. So, uh, but, you know, it is time to invest in good equipment, good people, and good training. Listen, we have to make sure our people are trained. And I know a, lot of, a lot of you say, well, listen, we hire a guy, and he's supposed to come out of the union hall trained. Or, or we hire a guy, he's already a journeyman. He should already be trained. But who trained him? What type of training? He could have been in the trade 20 years, but he could have been doing something wrong for the last 20 years, right? I'm sure all of us know that. We've met guys, and they say, oh, I've been in the trade 20 years. And then you see what they're doing, and you're like, well, holy crap, that's how you've been doing it 20 years? You're not doing it efficiently, or you're not doing it safely. So the point is, you and we should all take the time to make sure our people are trained properly the way that we want them to be trained, so that they can really go out and function well on the job. They can do it safe, but they can also build a quality project where we're not having to come back and replicate that work constantly or duplicate efforts, right? Because we're doing it right the first time. And that's a big component of training. So listen, there's a lot of people here that offer training. 
All these safety suppliers offer training. Concentra has different training classes. Onsite has different training classes that they offer. You know, we do training classes. We have our safety folks that are OSHA 500, so they can teach OSHA 10 and 30, and they can teach other classes. There's outside vendors that we use. You know, I know Lisa's here with ASU, OTI. Lisa, where are you? If you're still here, raise your hand. They've got a great program over at ASU, and they, they have an OSHA training institute there, so they have great classes there you can get your folks into. So there's programs out there that you can really tap into to get that training that you need. So it's time to invest, too. And the other thing is it's time to improve. It's nice to have a supercar, but listen, if you're driving off-road, <laughs> you might need some different tires on there. You might need an extra gas can. It's time for us to take a look at what we have and to be able to adapt and to be able to modify what we have based on the needs of what we're doing, right? So if you're on a job that you're building a ground-up you know, casino, that's great, but what happens if you're doing a casino remodel? And now all of a sudden you're inside of a casino that's occupied with the public. You know, Jim talked about that. One of the big things you guys deal with is public, right? The public protection factor that a lot of times we don't deal with on a ground up construction project. But what happens if you're doing a job and it's not ground up? You're inside of an existing casino and they want you to tear out half of it while, the, while it's open and while people are in there gambling on the other side of a little temp wall that you build. And yet you're gonna do heavy demo on the other side. What precautions do you have to take for that? So sometimes there's a modification factor and you have to be able to adapt. So listen, it's great that you guys all in here are, are supercars, right? So some of you are Ferraris, some are Lamborghinis, some of you are Shelby's, some of you are whatever car you like, 73 Pintos, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you guys like, <laughs> but you guys are some type of a supercar or some type of <laughs> a great vehicle and now it's time to just adapt to make sure that we are meeting the demands of the projects that we face. Does that make sense, everyone in here? Because I know we've all had to adapt, right? I mean, we've had to take people sometimes out of one position and we put them into another. I talked to a guy the other day on the plane. He used to be an estimator and now he's a BD guy, right? So I talked to some people and they're, they're carpenters and we've taken carpenters out of the field and made them safety people. And they, that, that's a pretty good transition. I don't know if I take a safety guy and make him a PM. Uh, that might be a little rough. But I'm willing to try, John. If it, if <laughs> not really. So lastly, this is the big thing. We are here today to inspire all of you to achieve greatness and safety. And one of the things that I would say is that all of you can inspire your folks. And, and listen, I wanna say hats off to our safety leaders again. So if our safety leaders stand up again, I know Jason's here, Jacob's here. Who else was a safety leader that we had in the room here? Victor, our winner, yeah. So you guys stand up, please, okay? Great, Art in the back, listen. Uh, give these guys a round of applause because they're the ones that are inspiring their guys to work safe. So thank you guys. We really appreciate your efforts. Listen, and I know there's one winner, but you guys are all winners in our eyes because if you're nominated for this, this is a big deal because you know how many hundreds and hundreds of workers that we have on the job. And this is not just for a guy who's a superintendent or, or just a foreman. This are, these are people that we really feel are leaders on the job that are inspiring people underneath them that work alongside you to really step up and to be safe. And that's what it's all about. So these guys really, hats off to you guys. I mean, we, t we spent hours and hours deliberating on, on these awards and who will even be nominated. So it's a big deal. But listen, success breeds success. What does that mean? Have you ever noticed that once a, once a certain team, a race team can find a way to win, then they suddenly start finding that path more and more often. And success will breed success, not just for yourself to keep repeating to that success, but it will inspire other people to then follow your lead and also lead them to some success. And that's what we're here to do. John made a great point. There's no, there is no secrecy in safety. It's not like this is Penta's secret and we're not gonna tell anyone, but we're super successful, but hey, hope you guys figure it out. It's not the way we work. We're like this, hey, if it works for us, then we wanna share it with you. Because this just means that all workers go home safe at the end of the day. So that success will breed success. So when you guys have success, share it with other people. Share it with other mechanical companies. Share it with other drywall companies. Share it with other general contractors. Be willing to share that success with others because success will breed success. And at the end of the day, what are we trying to have? We're trying to have safe and successful jobs. 
It's not like, listen, we're in competition with all a boatload of other general contractors. But listen, we partner with contract. We have great partners like with Hunt. And we have other great contractors that we partner with. And we learn from them and they learn from us. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to make our jobs safer and more successful. And that's what this is all about today. It's really just to inspire you guys. And so we really appreciate all of you guys being here and all the effort you guys put in all year long and this past year. And us being able to reward and acknowledge some of you guys is just, it's, it's a blessing to us and it's an honor for us to be able to do that for you guys. So. Again, I just really appreciate you guys coming. And with that, I'm going to turn this back over to John Canito, our president, to wrap it up. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you being here. Wow. Let's give a round of applause to Rod. That was actually amazing. I think he was talking about safety. <laughs> you can really commit to a metaphor, man. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> I also got the feeling you like alliteration, too. I think you need an English master's degree to kind of keep up with you. Ignite, increase, invest, improve, inspire. Well, it was definitely inspiring, Rod. Great, great speech. Um, and I, I want to just talk the last thing that Rod said. I think Rod actually had some notes for me to say, but I wanted to focus more on um, the last comment he said about sharing safety. If there's one thing, well, two points. First is I want to talk about the last comment he said about sharing safety. If there's one thing everybody that can leave this room and commit to doing is just sharing one bit of uh, information, knowledge, caring, um, or one kind of an action over the even just one a month, for the next 12 months to improve our project sites, improve any project sites, whether you're working with Hunt Penta or Penta or Hunt or any other general contractor, just, just commit to doing at least one thing to try and improve the, the surroundings to make a better and safe workplace for everybody. That would be fantastic. Um, the other thing I just wanted to reemphasize was the whole point of revving the machine, that whole theme. Rod went through a lot of the different um, pieces of it. But the real gist of it was we were all sitting around and we realized we were coming out of a recession when we really had slowed down. We, uh, we self-performed some work and we do GC work, but we'd really cut back down to, I think our low point in uh, 2011 was about $180 million a year. I think this year we're actually looking at doing upwards of $800 million a year on our projects. And we realized that we had to get ahead of that curve that we were going to be hiring a lot more labor, we were going to be working with a lot more subcontractors, and we would be working with a lot more just clients in general. And if we didn't jump on it and get ahead of the curve, we were going to start having problems and we were going to be playing catch up through this entire boom period. So that would be the real emphasis of what that theme is for today of revving the machine, is get ahead of the curve when it comes to safety and make sure you're ready for what's coming because the next two, three years are going to be great, but there's only one thing that's really could make it not great, and that's if we're not being safe and if we have any incidents because that's, that's really what we're out here to do. We are builders. That's what we do, but to do it unsafely is to fail. We're, no matter what we do, no matter how much work we get, no matter how much money we make, if we don't do it safely, we've failed, and that's really the heart of the message we're trying to communicate today. So. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for coming. And I think I get to raffle the 55-inch TV. Let's see. Can I pick it? Can I win it, too? No. Right. Let's see. It's yellow. 948-0002. Zero <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There we go, right in the back. So that's it. That's, that's the whole presentation. Thank you very much for coming, and um, be safe. <laughs>